I feel like we need to sign like junior. I know that would dev be for life, okay. which reminds me of like the too legit to quit. And we did this as kids. We <laughs> I made, don't remember the, that. You don't remember doing the hand signs? No, I just oh, know the Oh, we song. were so cool. <laughs> junior dev for life. <laughs> Hi, I'm Burke Holland. And I'm Amy Knight. And this is five things about CSS. Table flip. <laughs> Thing number one, this interview's over. Number one, how does the browser parse CSS at a high level? Yeah, high level. So there's layout, paint, and composite. So layout is just like the position and size of things. Paint is actually like hooking into your computer and drawing the actual pixels to the screen. And then composite, something a little bit newer, is like the action of taking those painted parts and putting them together into layers. So what about just setting everything to position fixed? Wouldn't that just fix all of our problems? <laughs> uh, I don't think that's what the users want. <laughs> oh, but that's how I code CSS. Whenever anything doesn't work in CSS, just set position fixed and move on with your life. Or you could just do like absolute, or you could just do negative margins and push everything off the page and the user sees nothing. Exactly, <laughs> CSS is wonderful. <laughs> Thing number two, the browser has to parse HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Well, what's the difference between the browser parsing the HTML and the CSS? Uh, so the first thing, CSS, is render blocking because the CSS has to be completely done before it can uh, actually pull in the JavaScript. So it has to parse the CSS before it can even start parsing the JavaScript. Yep, because you can imagine, you know, JavaScript comes in, changes colors of things. It's going to be like super jarring for the user to see that. And then also, like your JavaScript is reaching for things inside your render tree. And so if you have, if your CSS is reordering things and the JavaScript hasn't, and the CSS hasn't been loaded yet, then JavaScript's going to get wrong answers. Right, that would be a problem. Yes. So the, the HTML is parsed first. Uh, so the HTML, yes. Uh, well, or they could go at the same time. Like basically, you get your HTML, you get your CSS, and they get mashed up together into something called a render tree. And CSS is context free. What yeah. does that mean exactly? So CSS being context free, it would be better if we actually like maybe talked about the HTML for a little bit. Okay. So, so HTML, you can think about it like a ten-year-old could write some HTML, forget to close a tag. The browser needs to account for the fact that that ten-year-old hasn't closed a tag. D that, that just or somebody just, me. Or somebody just, somebody just be a ten-year-old. Yes, yeah. yeah. Or somebody <laughs> forgets. So the browser has to have actual code. It has to have context of you know, specifically what it's on at that point, it has to have context around what's around it, where CSS doesn't, because you have to give the browser valid CSS. And if it doesn't, then it just doesn't work. Yes. <laughs> so does this mean that like you don't, need, are, I think what you're trying to say is that you don't need semicolons in JavaScript. Is that right? <laughs> you don't need semicolons in JavaScript? Yeah, I yes, think that's what yeah. you're trying to say. I like them. I do too. And I don't understand why. Thing number three. Now, I've heard of the DOM, which is the document or the page that's loading. Yep. But there's such thing as a CSS sum. <laughs> yeah. CSS sum. I don't know how you actually pronounce it. CSS sum. But sure, sure. What well, is we, that? we can make that up. Um, so it's a CSS object model. So it really is kind of, you can think of it like the DOM. So it's this like AST tree like structure. You need to have the DOM and you need to have the CSS object model because they're going to get mashed up together into something called the render tree that the browser uses to actually like paint and draw everything in the correct order and stuff like that. Um, but the CSS object model and the DOM, like the, the key there is just to remember like they're not one to one because if you imagine like your DOM is going to have like your script tags or a head element, meta tags, stuff like that. Whereas the CSS object model, if it's not rendered to the screen, it's not in the object model for the CSS. Interesting. Yep. And, and CSS om is much harder to pronounce than DOM. <laughs> yes. Just, yes, it's yes, just a, yes. a hard, much more difficult acronym. Yeah, now you got me thinking. How can I pronounce it? CSS om. CSS om. It sounds very like. CSS om. But see, that would not, that's not CSS at all. It'd be like CSS. Thing number four. Uh, if I'm a JavaScript developer, can I just be honest and say, why do I even need to know CSS? Do I, I hate really CSS. even I right. want to do, do this. I really even need to know yeah, it? Yeah, that's how I used to be too. Mm. And then I realized when I got a like purely front end role that like my CSS skills sucked. <laughs> uh, so so what do I need to know? Um, I mean, there's a couple things. Like you want to stay up to date on your CSS skills. Like um, Flexbox is way more performant than using a floated layout. It's also like way easier to use. Are you like, saying no float left anymore, now Flexbox? Yeah, no, 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 don't float. 
I heard somebody say float the other day. I was like, no, don't do that. Oh, why floats, do you want to clearing why floats? Why do you like pain? Don't this do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you know, besides that, I think yeah, you just you you need to like stay excited about CSS to an extent as well. Um, the other thing too to keep in mind, so JavaScript is not always the best choice for styling. Like JavaScript wasn't created for styling necessarily. So with CSS, like a lot of these properties automatically are going to hook into your GPU, so they're going to be faster. Right. So when yeah. we say hook into the GPU, what do we yes. mean by that? Like, so for people who don't know, why is that more important than just not having the GPU? Yeah. So CPU is just going to like take a lot more time. Um, that's back to like compositing. Compositing uses a GPU, so like there's certain properties like transform opacity, stuff like that. Those are the kind of things that you would want to use. Right, and that makes it much, much faster and more performant. Yep. Yeah. yep. And there's so much you can do with CSS now if you don't believe us. You should check out CodePen. You can do a lot with CSS before you even need JavaScript. Sorry, yep. JavaScript developers. <laughs> I still love JavaScript though. I do too. Don't tell the CSS people yeah. I said that. I'm not trading JavaScript for CSS any <laughs> day soon. Yep. Number five, what would you say trips people up the most about CSS? This is a tough question because, I did a whoa. Yeah, I did a little Twitter poll actually before I did my talk on this uh, and specificity and Z-index were like really high up there. So specificity, you know, like the cascade, everybody's like, you know, screw it, this just doesn't make any sense, but you know, it's just code. It's just code the browser understands. So it, there's like a systematic mathematical way to go about it. You just need to know, you know, which selector you're using. You need to know how it's calculated, what the value of it is. Uh, as far as the index goes, um, I don't think most people realize, I didn't until I started digging into this stuff, that the index is all about uh, a stacking context. And stacking context, you have like your root stacking context, which is created by like the document, and then you can have local stacking context, which uh, is created by like certain you know properties. So like Z index is going to create a local stacking context. So you need to understand, you know, if I have like this section of the page that I want to move under this section of the page, then this section needs to be within the same stacking context as this section. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> Wait. That oh. was confusing even just to listen to. Yeah, and then there's this other thing, like people don't realize that certain properties that you're using besides the index will create a new stacking context. So I've talked to developers who have like spent days trying to figure out where in the world this new stacking context is coming, but like opacity transforms again, those are going to create new stacking context. The specificity thing I think is interesting. Number one, because saying the word specificity <laughs> is very hard. <laughs> and also because I think we've all been at that place where you're just like, you get so fed up, you're just like, important. Bang, I'm yeah. done with it. Oh, this code smelled. Right, exactly. Yeah. And somebody once said, like, it's Friday, important your way to freedom, right? I mean, like, you just <laughs> want it to work. I've done that before. I'm not ashamed to say it. Yeah. The hardest thing for me about CSS is linking the CSS in the page, in the HTML page. Like, I can never remember what the syntax <laughs> is for the link tags. We have so, I'm so many Googling. build tools that do it for us now. Like, you we think, don't have to. I mean, you think after doing web development for 15 years, I know how to do a link tag. I don't. <laughs> and that's a problem. <laughs> I'm Burke Collin. I'm Amy Knight. And now you know five things about CSS. Want a table flip? Yes. Table flip. <laughs> <laughs>